Um, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about the, the place of the Srebrenica genocide um, in the wider, the wider Bosnian genocide. Um, uh, the very concept of a, the Srebrenica genocide is one that has been established in, by, court, uh, by court verdicts and by um, discourse. Um, it certainly wasn't clear at the time when the war was in progress that we should consider this particular massacre to be somehow separate from uh, the rest of the massacres and killings that took place uh, during, during the war. Um, yet now we have this concept of a Srebrenica genocide rather than the concept of a uh, Bosnian genocide. And if you talk about the Srebrenica genocide, it's normally accepted by most normal people. If you talk about a Bosnian genocide, it will provoke controversy. Um, if I talk, put, put the idea of a, a paper or a speech on the Bosnian genocide to my academic colleagues, they might come back and say, it wasn't really, was it really a genocide or not? Um, so I think this, this, is, this division between the sort of Srebrenica genocide, which is established in the sort of wider Bosnian genocide, is rather uh, probl problematic. Um, now, it sort of came, came down to us, this concept of Srebrenica genocide, um, as a result of uh, judicial uh, verdicts. Um, so the... Um, Proceedings of the ICTY, the successful cases, firstly against Radislav Krstic in, in 2001, uh, established judicially, judicially that there had been a genocide, an act of genocide at Srebrenica. What happened at Srebrenica was, uh, was genocide. And um, uh, other attempts to prosecute uh, suspects uh, for the, act of, the crime of genocide outside of Srebrenica undertaken at the ICTY have not so far been uh, successful. Um, then the International Court of Justice in its uh, 2007 ruling in a case of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina against Serbia um, ruled that what had happened in Srebrenica had been genocide, but what had happened elsewhere um, had not been. So it was very clear on that division. And in that sense, the ICJ uh, built upon the earlier decisions of the ICTY, and essentially the ICTY had created this precedent of the Srebrenica genocide, which the ICJ then, uh, then um, sort of re recognised or upheld. Um, you know, I think it's, it's also important to, to remember in all this that we have this ideal that there are sort of objective, real courts of law which are completely neutral and are partial, and then there are political tribunals, kangaroo courts, which are sort of carry out political verdicts, but the reality is that there's a lot of grey area uh, in between. Um, so well, even in sort of established democracies, you have um, courts uh, um, influenced by political discourse and arguments um, at, at the time. Uh, so um, the ICJ verdict on, on genocide in Bosnia, that it had occurred at at Srebrenica but not elsewhere should be in some sense seen as kind of a, a compromise verdict. Um, some of the judges there didn't even think Serbia should be, could legitimately be tried. It was not, they felt it wasn't even uh, valid that it should be um, subject to these proceedings. Um, so you can sort of see it as a sort of, a, a, a sort of compromise uh, verdict, what happened, what, what, the 2007 verdict uh, of the ICJ. Um, so these sort of two courts, the ICTY and the ICT, ICJ, have so far established a genocide at Srebrenica, but not a genocide um, in other parts of, of Bosnia. So now you have this kind of rather artificial concept of a Srebrenica genocide, as if it was a kind of sep separate, a separate um, case from the rest of Bosnia to governor. Um, now I should say also straight away that there has been some sort of modifications to this picture, um, one of which has been happened straight away and has gone relatively un unnoticed. Um, the case of Nikola Jogic in, in Germany. Nikola Jogic was a, a Bosnian Serb paramilitary uh, commander who was convicted under the German court system for genocide in Germany under German domestic law um, and then appealed his case all the way up to the European Court of Human Rights uh, which then um, upheld the genocide conviction and ruled that Jogic's conviction had been legitimately in, in keeping with the international definition of genocide. So straight away, the ruling of the, Interna the European Court of Human Rights has challenged the picture that genocide only occurred at, at Srebrenica. Um, and more recently, you had the, the conviction of Zdravko Tolimir, 
the uh, Deputy Intelligence Chief of the Bosnian Serb Army, uh, which um, recognized that it wasn't just the, the Bosniaks of Srebrenica who were the target group for genocide in 1995, but the Bosniaks of East Bosnia uh, more, uh, more widely. Um, so the picture isn't, isn't quite as clear cut as, as all that. Um, nevertheless, you have is still how I'm saying that the predominant picture is one of this kind of you know, local Srebrenica genocide. Uh, I think it was Zdravko Grebo who called it a municipal genocide. Um, as if you could simply explain what happened in Srebrenica through local, local hatreds, uh, local conflicts between local Serbs and local uh, Bosniaks. Um, and um, this was strengthened this picture by the ICJ's ruling, its, its reasoning in the case of Bosnia-Herzegovina against Serbia, when it was talking about the extent of hatred in the region that made genocide likely there. Um, and for various reasons, I don't think it's a valid, it's a valid model for explaining what happened in Srebrenica. Um, and in, in this, on its grounds, I, I would sort of recommend the book of my, my, my colleague, Adina Bacirovic um, of, of Sarajevo, uh, who um, her book, Genocide on the, on the Drina River, has um, you know, explained, challenged this idea of genocide just happening in Srebrenica in 1995. Uh, she argues that genocide began there in, 19, in 1992. Um, so, as she explains, the, the, the model is that you have um, uh, a mass killings uh, across East Bosnia um, in 1992 with a genocidal intent of destroying the Bosniaks as a group in, in the wider Podrinia or East Bosnian uh, region. Um, and it was a systematic planned genocide occurring across, across the region. Srebrenica, as we know, survived in the short term as, as an enclave. And so the, the, sort of the killing process or the destruction process uh, then took a different, a different form. Um, there was a siege attempted to just continue the, to sort of starve the, the Bosniak residents of Srebrenica uh, to death. Um, nevertheless, Srebrenica survived as an enclave until 1995. Um, and then the massacre occurred, which was the culmination of this, this genocidal uh, process. Um, so, in a sense, the massacre that took place in 1995 was sort of the end result of a longer genocidal process rather than something that had suddenly occurred in that region at that time um, in, the, in the short term. Um, now, I'd sort of um, also say something about the wider context of the war, which explains what happened in, in Srebrenica. Why was this massacre different from previous massacres in terms of numbers killed? a much larger number of people killed, um, and a, a more systematic attempt to kill every single combat or potentially combat age uh, Bosniak uh, male rather than killing a smaller number and expelling uh, the, the rest. Um, and this can only really be understood in terms of the context in which, uh, of the war at that stage of the, of the Bosnian war in, in 1995. Um, so in the earlier stage of the war, uh, the, the, the Serb perpetrators were carrying out the mass killings against an essentially relatively defenseless uh, population which wasn't prepared to resist. Um, it appeared at that time in spring of 1992 that the, uh, the um, Bosnian Serbs had all the military power and success on, on their, their side. Um, and so genocide took the form that it did. Essentially, uh, the goal was, the genocidal goal of destroying non-Serbs, particularly the presence of non-Serbs, particularly uh, Bosniaks, but also Croats, uh, in Bosnia Herzegovina, um, to destroy them as a group in, in that area by killing one part and expelling uh, the rest, destroying the culture, eradicating all traces of the non-Serb uh, presence. Um, but um, nevertheless, uh, um, the military victory wasn't complete. Uh, the Bosnian defenders, who became increasingly Bosniak in proportion, so although it was a multinational resistance, it was more and more predominantly uh, Bosniak. Um, they survived the initial onslaught, they began to rebuild themselves, and they began to resist. And by 1995, the war was going very much against uh, the Serb rebels. Um, so you had these military victories in the short term in Bihać in the autumn 
1994, you had Croatian victories in, in southwest Bosnia. You had Operation uh, Flash um, in Western uh, Slavonia when the Croats defeated the uh, uh, Serb occupying forces in that part of, of Croatia. So the sort of the, the Serbs were on the beginning to lose uh, the war. And one of the reasons for losing the war was the loss, loss of um, the lack of manpower. Essentially, they were being outmanned by the Bosnian enemy. So the Serb army was increasingly undermanned. It was suffering from desertion, from low morale, whereas the Bosnians, the Bosnian army was increasingly well organized, increasingly um, at a high, high morale level. Uh, the um, uh, increasingly uh, determined um, and more recruits than they could really um, arm properly. And in this context, the need to destroy the enemy manpower was um, crucial from the point of view of the Serb, uh, Serb uh, war aims. Um, so then it became less sensible, if you like, to let combat age Bosniak males go. And instead, you had the new goal of actually exterminating them every last one uh, systematically. So essentially it was a question of um, a change, not, not a change of the, of the aims of the war, aims, aims of the genocide, uh, but a, a, a change of the means. How do you achieve your goal of destroying this group you want to destroy and establishing your ethnically pure Serb entity? And you do it through this systematic killing of combat age uh, males. Um, the um, you know, perhaps in some sense the Serb rebels were saved from the further shame of further genocidal stains against the name by the fact they didn't then win many other great victories. So had they taken Bihać in 1995, you could have seen another genocidal massacre there on a model of, um, of uh, Srebrenica. Uh, so in a sense it doesn't really make sense then to sort of to buy this model of a kind of local, a local Srebrenica uh, genocide as though it was all sort of to do with um, Serb revenge against Nasser Oric's forces. I mean, it's this idea that somehow it puts the onus on the victims as the ones who were, who were to blame for it, that somehow Nasser Oric killed local Serbs and then the Serbs in Srebrenica were fired up for, for revenge. Um, it's what that turns reality on its head in terms of uh, who was to blame, what the sequence of events was. Um, now, just to sort of say, you know, to, you know, it was always fruitful to compare the Bosnian genocides to other genocides, and obviously the Holocaust features very largely in an understanding of genocide. Um, unlike the, the, the Bosnian Serb rebels on a much smaller scale half a century later, the Nazis themselves went through different phases in their goals of how to exterminate uh, the Jews. So if the Germans had won the war and beaten Britain in 1940, you might have had the enactment of the, the Madagascar plan, the shipping of Jews from Europe to uh, Madagascar, which would have also been an act of genocide intended to and annihilate the Jews of Europe and to kill them physically, but would have been a slightly different kind of genocide from the systematic killing of every last one, which happened um, during um, the Holocaust as it, as we, as it came to, to happen. And equally, if they def Nazis had won a quick victory over the Soviet Union uh, in 1941, you might have had the mass expulsion of Jews to Siberia and their extermination that way, because obviously expelling huge numbers of people into unhospitable terrains is also an act of genocide and aimed to exterminate them but in a slightly different uh, way. Um, now, as the Holocaust was carried out, it was very much uh, linked to the particular war against the Soviet Union. So um, the extermination of um, Jews, systematic extermination of Jews began in occupied Soviet Union in 1941, in the summer of 1941, and began with combat age males, rather like in, in Srebrenica. So initially the Nazis were exterminating um, Jewish men en masse only. Um, then they very quickly shifted to killing women and children as well. Um, the Jews were killed as the combatants and the, um, and the women and children were then killed by some accounts because they um, uh, had no means of support and as a sort of rationalized way of killing off women and children so it wouldn't be then, you wouldn't have that burden of this unsupported population to, uh, to worry about. Um, so in a sense also, like you want to compare, make a comparison, the Holocaust too, there was this uh, um, changing of genocidal means towards the same uh, genocidal ends. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind that the sort of the, what happened in, 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 in Bosnia in 1992, in, in Visegrad, in Priador, in other places, in Zvornik, involved the same 
uh, genocidal goals, massacres with genocidal um, character, killing of, deliberate killing of civilians, women and children as well. Um, it was just a slightly different form of genocide using fewer, fewer people, um, involving fewer actual deaths, but just as genocidal in, it, in its aims. So you know, the idea that you can have, as, as the ICJ suggested, um, one kind of massacres taking place in 1992 with no, with no proven genocidal intent, and then later on in 1995, a slightly different kind of massacre with, with genocidal intent, doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense because the, sort of, the process uh, was continuous right up to Srebrenica, which let's not forget Srebrenica massacre was presided over by Radko Mladic. He wasn't a local commander, he was the commander of the whole uh, Bosnian Serb uh, army. Um, more Bosniaks were killed in East Bosnia in 1992 altogether than they were killed in, the, in 1995, the year of the Srebrenica massacre. So in terms of the actual killing, the killing uh, levels, uh, 1992 in East Bosnia was a worse year for killing of Bosniaks than, than 1995. Um, now, to sort, of, to sort of sum up now, um, was it genocide? Now, of course, it's a question of semantics. You know, it depends on how you define genocide. And scholars can't, can't agree on what genocide is. You won't find two genocide scholars who have the same viewpoint. Um, if you have a very narrow definition, then you can say it wasn't genocide. And if you have a, very, a much a broader definition, then you can say it was genocide. I think it's quite a sterile debate, quite frankly, over terminology, you know, when you can decide what actually happened. It's more important. Um, but I'd say that also um, the we you know the, the judicial record which has formed our, our picture of Srebrenica rests upon the international recognized definition of the UN Convention, uh, which itself was the result of political maneuvering. Uh, so cultural genocide, the idea of cultural destruction as an act of genocide was excluded from the international definition uh, um, as a result of the intervention of interested states. Um, had it been included, uh, then I think Serbia would have been convicted of genocide um, by the ICJ in 2007. Uh, Raphael Lemkin, the man who coined the term genocide in the first place, was believed in this concept of cultural destruction. There's no doubt that what happened in Bosnia in 1992 to 1995 involved large-scale cultural uh, destruction. So I think if you'd stuck to Raphael Lemkin's original definition, you'd have a much stronger, less controversial case for saying what happened in Bosnia as a whole uh, was um, genocide. Um, another thing on the question of numbers, um, in terms of the, uh, the numbers uh, killed at Bosnia, um, the victim, you know, in, in sort of narrow definition of war losses, uh, direct fatalities, Bosnia wasn't on a scale of, of Rwanda, for example, or the Holocaust. Um, but nevertheless, genocide isn't simply a matter of numbers. Uh, as Adam Jones pointed out, um, if you stick to the international definition, it's technically, technically possible to carry out genocide without killing anybody. So, you know, you could, for example, round up all members of a group and sterilize them all, and you'd have destroyed the group according to the international definition. Um, preventing births within the group was one of the terms of a definition without, you know, so without killing anybody. So you, you can, technically speaking, carry out genocide without killing anybody. Um, I'd say in terms of the goals, establishing a great you know, ethnically pure Serb state, the Bosnian genocide has been more successful than the Rwandan genocide, even though Rwanda involved much larger, much larger uh, killing. Um, also, another point is the um, division between civilian and military losses. Large numbers of Bosnian fatalities in Bosniak and, and fatalities particularly were, uh, were um, military losses, but the division is an artificial one in a sense if you have complete unarmed people trying to defend themselves against genocidal onslaught, whether they're technically soldiers or not is secondary. Um, think of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising when Jewish fighters tried to m mount a desperate last stand against the Nazis and were, were exterminated by the Nazis. And they were fighters, but they were nevertheless they were military casualties, but they were undoubtedly genocide victims as well. Um, so I think actually, you know, you can sort of go beyond some of these uh, artificial definitions um, and semantic disputes. Um, and I think um, going beyond, you know, we can be clear about what happened, and we can also be clear that I think for many of us, for any reasonable definition, what happened, that, that does count as... As, as genocide, of which Srebrenica was just um, a, a culminating act. Okay, thank you.